churches in Rwanda today, people were remembering the darkest chapter in their country's history. 20 years ago today, the Rwandan president died when his plane was shot down on the outskirts of Kigali. Over the next 100 days, at least 800,000 people were killed. Most of the victims were ethnic Tutsis or moderate Hutus. Well, Canadian soldiers were part of the UN peacekeeping mission in Rwanda. Despite their efforts, they didn't have the international support needed to end the violence. Well, the sights, sounds and smells from that time remain burned in their memories. Major Jean-Guy Plante was the media spokesperson for the UN mission in Rwanda. He worked alongside the commander of the mission, Romeo Dallaire, and he joins us now from our Ottawa studio. Major, thanks for speaking with us. When you first stepped off the plane in Rwanda 20 years ago, what was the first thing that struck you? Well, the first thing I must say was the smell. Uh, the smell of uh, dead bodies being burnt. Uh, I had to get accustomed to that very quickly because it was going to last for the next three months. It must have been shocking to find out what that was. You were the official spokesperson for the UN mission. What was the most challenging part of this particular posting for you? Well, I must say that I was the military spokesman for the, for the mission. Now, to go back to your question, it was to having to uh, be with the uh, media people on a daily basis since my job, in addition, to being the uh, s spokesman, I was also responsible for their logistics. That is to uh, take them every day to where they wanted to go. And media people, as you know, they don't like to uh, write their report in an office. They want to go where the action is. So I had to decide whether it was safe enough to go where they wanted to go. And one, once I was satisfied, we would go. And this was on a daily basis from, uh, let's say, morning to uh, tonight. And I can understand they were probably persistent to get to uh, some of perhaps the worst areas. We have some pictures uh, of you uh, in Rwanda back in 1994. Is there a particular memory or moment that sticks out from your time there? Oh, I must say that uh, seeing children and all the people that have been uh, massacred or that were still alive, abandoned along sides of the road, of roads, was probably the worst thing for me. Uh, because at that time, I had just been a grandfather for the first time. And, and my, uh, I was thinking of my grandson in Canada, who was uh, about one year old then. I'm, I'm sorry. No. And, 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 uh, and uh, uh, living in very comfortable and to see those hundreds and thousands of uh, uh, children literally abandoned, uh, this, this was a sort of a heartbreaking situation every day, I must say. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't even imagine what that must have been like for you. And you witnessed extreme violence, as you just described. And I understand that you said, uh, and this is a quote from you, I honestly don't know how I came back and wasn't traumatized. Do you still feel like, do you still feel that way? And how were you able to overcome what you saw there? Well, I, I, I guess I was one of the lucky ones because uh, I came back and uh, took my release from the forces. And, and not because of Rwanda at all, because they, they were offering early retirement packages. And I immediately was offered a job with the UN. And uh, perhaps the transition between Rwanda and having had another employment immediately, uh, say a much easier job, uh, helped me to uh, go over that and not suffer like some uh, uh, some of my colleagues uh, uh, did. Mm -hmm. After that, the world had said uh, never again. Um, and yet we continue to see 
more ongoing humanitarian crises even today. Do you think we've learned anything since Rwanda? Honestly, I don't think so. And I'll give you just one example. My first mission as a Blue Beret was in Leopoldville in the Congo in 1996, uh, uh, in fact. I was just a very young military policeman. And uh, Congo was a very bad place to be at that time. Uh, uh, civil war, but not as much, of course, not to the extent of Rwanda. But I had to go back, I had the opportunity to go back several times since then. And even right now, in 2004, if you look at the, at the newspaper, read uh, what the media have to write, you would see that it is even worse now than it was in 1994 when I was there. This is one example. <clears throat> and of course, you don't want to talk about the Darfur, Central Africa right now, mm -hmm. which, which makes the news every day. No, to, go, to, to, to answer your question, no, we have not learned. When I say we, the international community. Now, don't forget one thing, the international community, before they get involved into a, to trying to settle the conflict, they have to get the approval of the Security Council. Right. Uh, and, and, and at the same time, they have to take uh, or look into their own interest. Is it worth it to go and help those people or not? Must be incredibly disheartening for you. Major, I understand that you and some of your fellow Canadian soldiers, including Senator Romeo Dallaire, are meeting in Ottawa to mark the anniversary together. What do you want Canadians and the world to remember about the Rwanda genocide? You know, I, I think you, uh, I will use your words and some of the words that, you know, that has been used uh, uh, throughout the years never again but that doesn't really apply never again because we seeing it again it's it, again it's very i mean i could talk to you and dream about things but it's the involvement of the international community and i like i just said the countries before they get involved into another and i specify another country conflict in africa First of all, they look at their own interest. Mm -hmm. Do we have interest in that country? Perhaps if, if we were to drop that and think about helping the poor people there, perhaps our attitude would change towards going out and helping those people. At the same time, the leaders of those countries, they must help themselves also. Major, I want to thank you so much for your courage and the work you have done, and we really appreciate you taking the time to tell us your story. Thank you very much. That was retired Major Jean-Guy Plante. He was the spokesperson for the UN mission in Rwanda, the military spokesperson, and he joined us from Ottawa.